Welcome back, Rich Minds. It's your boy Reno coming back to you with another video. And today's topic is gonna be they obsessed, but you moved on, up, and away. Yes, sir. Let me say it louder for my chosen ones in the back. Listen, family, they obsessed, but you moved on, up, and away. All right. Now, listen, y'all, this can go for families, okay? This can go for your friends, relationships, marriages, jobs, associates. I don't care who it is, y'all, all right? Whatever ship is on, it go for all that, okay? Now, understand something. You moved on, which means maybe you moved on with another partner. Maybe you moved on to another job. Maybe you moved on to another uh, chapter of your book, which is your life, okay? Um, you moved up, all right? You got the position. You got the career, all right? Things are actually working out in your favor. You have moved up. But not only that, y'all, but you moved away. You left your hometown. You left your dysfunctional family. Right. You left that abusive marriage or relationship. You left. OK. And so with that being said, y'all, the fact that you have left, they are now obsessed. But y'all already know the rest. All right. Yes, they didn't appreciate you. Yes, they took you for granted. Yes, they they have taken advantage. All right. But when you decided to put your foot down and say, you know what, enough is enough. I'm about to move on with my life. I'm going to move up in my career. OK. And I'm going to move away from y'all. People tend to get, you know, people start straightening up. You know, it's like when you get pulled over by an officer. Hopefully you didn't get pulled over. But like when you get pulled over by an officer, okay, you, yeah, you talking with your best suit. All right. With your best voice. You understand what I'm saying, y'all? And that's the same thing with them. They are now trying to straighten up. And on top of that, y'all, they are obsessed, obsessed with your new moves, obsessed with your new man, your new car, your new apartment. They stalking you on social media. Come on, y'all. Y'all know how they do. And so what I need y'all to realize is they are obsessed, but you have moved on up and away. All right. But we're going to go ahead and get directly into this video. Before we do so, y'all make sure y'all leave a thumbs up on this video as well as subscribe to the channel. Yes, sir. Not only that, y'all, but y'all be sure to ring my bell so you can be notified after every single video I post. Let's get into it, Chosen One. So, number one, family, um, the first sign you know that they are obsessed, or I would say the first reason they are obsessed with you um, moving on up and away is they are searching for that same feeling, okay? They are searching for that same feeling. You know, y'all, <laughs> I'm sure nobody never took this drug that I'm about to mention. Matter of fact, kids, if you're watching, stay away from drugs, okay? I'm talking to the adults as well. Stay away from the drugs, all right? I don't care, I don't care how much money you got. I don't care, you know, who you hanging out with. Stay away from the drugs, right? I want to make, make sure I make that clear. But let me say this, y'all. So searching for that same feeling is equivalent to searching for the same that same feeling you got when you first got high, you know, when you first got drunk, you know, when you first had sex, you know, it's that first thrill, like you're looking for that first time, okay, and it's the same thing with them, y'all, it's like they are searching for that same feeling that you gave them, right, but here's the funny thing, they are searching for something that they would never find, it's almost like a needle in the haystack right it's almost like a needle in the haystack do y'all know how big a bell of hay is okay now think about that needle you trying to find it yeah y'all that's the same amount of probability they have or the same percentage of probability they have when it comes to searching for that same feeling you gave them you know y'all the feeling of compassion the feeling of love you know the feeling of thought the feeling of care, right? The feeling of understanding. Family, we live in a time now where people are clinging on to their money, their dollars, their, their space, <laughs> their homes, their belongings. People are not clinging to people like that no more unless they need them. Yeah, if a person needs you, then of course, yeah, I'm going to be around you every day. I need you, of course, right? Yeah, I miss you. Yeah, I want to come to your home. 
Yeah, yeah, I love you. You great. You beautiful. You handsome. Yeah, you all these things. Why? Because I need you. Right. But, you know, y'all, for the most for the mass majority of people, they're not, you know, clinging on to other individuals or trying to be friends or, you know, just connect with other people if it's not no type of benefit involved. And so what I'm simply saying, y'all, is that they are searching for that same feeling that you gave them in, in someone else, but they will never find it. Right. It's like they want the same feeling, but a different face. But you're going to keep bumping your head trying to get that same feeling from a different face because we are all wired differently, right? We are all wired differently. It's not the same. Somebody drop in the comments and say it's not the same. Yes, sir. Make sure you drop in the comments, family, and say it's not the same. But sticking to it, y'all, this is why they are obsessed that you moved on up and away. Why? Because they're searching for that same feeling. Somebody who work as hard as you do. Somebody who got your values and your principles, right? Somebody who have what you have. And that's the thing, y'all. It has to be in you and not on you, right? And that's why they lost you because they didn't have the same things that you had. Simple as that, y'all. But moving on to the next one, number two, it's going to be this, y'all. Um, codependency. Yep, codependency, y'all. This right here, listen, y'all. This is why they are obsessed with you because... You, you are an independent person, okay? You are a solo individual. And the fact that you are solo, you are independent, you technically don't need nobody. I'm not saying you don't need God, okay? I'm not saying you don't need faith, the word, right? I'm not saying you don't, I'm not even saying that you don't even need the love of, of your family, right? I don't want people to think that I'm preaching hate. And I'm preaching, oh, we don't need family. No, I'm saying to protect yourself from dysfunctional and toxic family members. That's what I'm saying, right? But let's just be honest, y'all. Outside of all that stuff, you are an independent individual. The reason why people get so obsessed with other people is because they have become codependent, right? Now, we're going to talk about all the ways of how you can become codependent, but let's just start with the obvious, right? So, you can become codependent on a person financially. Let's just be straight up and down about this. You can be codependent on a person financially, which means, you know, when they eat, you are used to them feeding you and providing for you, male or female, because, because I'm going to say this, y'all. We got some women who take care of these guys out here too. You know what I'm saying? Like we do have some women who take care of these guys, but for the mass majority, real men are not looking to be taken care of. You know, most times we're doing the providing. In fact, that's what we were designed to do. But sticking to the point, y'all, um, people get codependent financially, right? Like maybe you always throw them a few dollars. They got used to that, right? Now you're trying to move on up in the way. They obsessed. They're like, hey, uh-uh. I, you was a resource, you know, so financially is a way. Maybe you always helped out with their kid school clothes or you helped out with them getting food. You helped pay the bill. This is why, y'all, you don't want to start certain things because what you start is going to end that way, right? I'm going to say that once again. Whatever you start, it will end that way, okay? But codependency financially then you can have people who are codependent on you mentally which means you are the only thing that is on their mind they're not thinking about hobbies they're not thinking about friends they're not thinking about you know doing something for, uh, for themselves they're not thinking about going out they're not thinking about anything else but you and although this sounds cute and this sounds cool and it's like oh they thinking about me this is unhealthy even in the scriptures y'all it says that um, absence make the heart grow fonder so if if the bible says this <laughs> you know you have to know that it's some type of truth to it okay and a person will mentally get you know hooked on you they will especially if you're that type of person to where you show that you care you're showing up and you're you're filling in places where people who supposed to be showing up for them are not feeling 
understand something y'all they'll get used to that and they'll become codependent so that's why you got to be mindful of who you be a good person to or at least have limits to your good you follow what i'm saying because a person will get dependent on you mentally all right then you have emotionally which i think is the worst of them all because a person basically can't even function without you a, per a, a person basically can't even live without you because it is the massaging of the emotions that you do for them right that you give them it's like you massage their emotions it's like you massage their mind right and they can't go to sleep without you massaging those emotions right they can't even move Move on without you massaging those emotions family there are so many people who have killed themselves all right so many individuals who have taken themselves off the map you know why because they said i can't live without you i can't do this without you i'm not gonna live on this earth if i am not able to work at my job that i had for 40 years I, I'm not going to be able to operate or fully function if I'm not able to be with this same woman, this same man. Okay? Understand something, y'all. They are obsessed because they have become codependent. All right? Once again, y'all. Yeah, it seemed cute and it seemed like it's, ooh, it's, it's okay. No, y'all. This is the beginning of the crazies. This is the beginning of the crazies. So understand that. But this is why they are obsessed, y'all. Um, or this is a sign that they are obsessed. The codependency. Point blank period, y'all. You want to be around people or be with people or be connected to people who don't need you. I know it sounds messed up and I know it sounds, you know, selfish or it may sound, you know, kind of weird. But family, the relationships that last the longest are relationships. And when I say relationships, I'm talking about friendships, jobs, relationships, any type of bondage. The ones that last the longest are the ones that uh, they don't need one another. I don't need you. You don't need me. You know why we are here? It's because of want. I want to be here. I desire to be here. Make sense, y'all? Okay. Moving on to the next one is going to be number three. That is... Uh, they are traumatized by new experiences. Yes, sir. Let me say it louder for my chosen ones in the back. Listen, family. They are traumatized by new experiences. Okay, Rena, what does that mean? Let me break this down for you. So they've gotten used to the treatment that you provided for them. They've gotten used to the experiences that they have provided, that you have provided for them. And once they left or once they felt as if, you know, they were able to dump you or throw you away or quit the job or whatever the case is. Once they began to realize that, oh, that grass ain't greener on the other side. Once they realized that they are now traumatized by their new experiences because they get spoiled. Right. They got spoiled with the way that you treated them. They got spoiled with that experience. And once they get a new experience, it's like they are traumatized. For example, let's just say this woman is used to dealing with this man who be spending money on her. He getting her Amari bags. I think I said it right. Y'all Amari, Amari bags, you know, um, Birkin bags. Right. I don't even know if Birkin bags still, you know, the thing, but Birkin bags, um, you know, just the most expensive of the expensive, right? She's used to that lifestyle, right? I didn't say that he was abusive. I didn't say that he was beating on her. I didn't say any of those things. We're just assuming that he's a great guy <laughs> and he is just cashing out on his woman. Well, let's just say she say, you know what? If he if he does this, maybe I can get a higher uh, uh, I can get another guy who's on a higher level than him making more money. Maybe I, maybe the rewards would be a lot more. Maybe so. You know what, Tony? I don't want to be with you no more. I think I want to go over here to Charles, right? Oh no, nah, we ain't gonna say Charles, y'all. I think I want to go over here to a richer, right? Yeah, y'all. I want to go over here to Richard because he may be richer. Yeah, you know. But anyway. So she may think that it's going to be even better, but turns out this guy over here is stingy. Never thought about that. Yeah, this guy over here, he, you know, he tight with his money. Yeah, he hold his pockets. Yeah, can't nobody get in these pockets right here, baby. Only my kids and my mama and barely them. <laughs> I only do for my kid because I had her. 
right? But what's going to happen to this woman is she's going to be traumatized by the new experiences. Like, I'm not used to this. You know, have you ever been to a nice hotel, right? And you got, you know, complimentary breakfast, room service. It's luxury in there. Nothing but, you know, great things that's inside the hotel. Everything is luxurious. And then you go to a regular hotel. You're like, hold on. I ain't used to this. You start getting traumatized by the new experiences. You know why? Because you are used to, or I'm going to say this, y'all. What you are used to is not matching up to what's going on currently. And so what happens is it's a big turnoff, right? And you get traumatized because you want to go back to that lifestyle. Right, it's no different from a guy who became a multi-millionaire, and he got used to the millionaire lifestyle. But he lost his money. Now he got to go back down to the fifty thousand dollar a year lifestyle. He's gonna be traumatized by that new experience. Yeah, y'all, no more caviar. Mm mm. Yep, no more five star restaurants and five star hotels. It's looking more like three and a half stars, right? And if you lucky, maybe a four star, but no more five stars, okay? But sticking to the point, y'all, they are traumatized by new experiences. Number four, y'all, the need for control. The need for control. This right here is a big one. The reason why it's a big one, y'all, is because um, a lot of narcissists tend to want to control their victims, okay? Um, a lot of people who tend to have uh, an obsessive trait about themselves, period, whether they are narcissists or not, any obsessive person want total control, okay? And so this goes for even a woman who's submissive. Let me explain this. So most time, if a woman is submissive, that's great. That's good. But she will only be submissive as long as she feel as if she can control her dynamic, control that man, passively aggressive, right? Passively aggressive, or have some type of say so in the environment or that man's life all right now this obviously can go for the same thing as men i'm just speaking for the mass majority because i do believe that most um men real men okay are leaders and you know they're not going to submit they're going to you know consider their woman's um perspective and of course take her advice if it's good but a real man leaves his home everybody knows y'all this is what's written in scripture but sticking to the point um whether it's a submissive woman or whether this is a a controlling man to the core they want control period all right they want control and so uh, when a person is obsessed, this is something that they need. They need that control because y'all know why? It is reassurance to their hearts. It is reassurance to their souls. And this is really sickening, okay? Because you should not want to control nobody in your life, right? You shouldn't even want to control your kids. You should want to train your kids in the way that they should go. Even the scripture tell you that right train a child in the way that they should go and even if they veer off okay or even if they even if they go astray they'll uh, find their way back to the truth all right and maybe i'm paraphrasing but y'all get the point your goal is not to control your kids it is to train your kids so they can be independent all right and guess what if they want to do something nice for their parents because their parents you know was there for them and uh played a huge role in their lives guess what then that's what the kid is going to do. But the goal is not to say, I'm going, you, you're going to be controlled and I'm going to control you when you get older. No, my goal is to train you up in the way that you should go. Meaning, uh, as far as spiritually, you know, as far as financially, mentally, emotionally, uh, physically, I should be the best mentor that you possibly have without having to turn to the streets. Bobby and John over here, etc., etc. Okay, but without beating a dead horse, y'all. Again, the need for control. This is a sign of an obsessive person. They got to be in control. They got to be in control of you know what we're doing for dinner, or who's coming over to the home, or uh, oh you got to go out and do something for yourself. I want to have control over that. They want control over everything. Point blank. Period. Number five, y'all. It's going to be this attachment disorder. Okay, attachment disorder. And so 
when you're talking about you know people who have an attachment disorder this means that when it's time for y'all to leave when it's time for y'all to depart when it's time for you to move on with your life okay move on with your career whatever the case is they have a problem with that and i'm talking about not just a oh okay you know whatever i'm sad but you know i'll get over it no this is like a big problem like yo i'm not going to be able to eat dinner for weeks if we have to detach I'm going to cry every time I leave you. I'm going to cry every time I see you, right? Or every time I see you on social media, I'm going to lose my marbles every time, all right? No, that's not how it should be. But this is a sign of an obsessive person, a person who is who have a problem with attachment uh, disorder, like uh, a problem with detaching themselves from their spouses or from their ex-boyfriend, their ex-girlfriend, Listen, y'all, anything that you cannot walk away from in 30 seconds, you got to leave it alone because it is a detriment to your future. If you're not able to walk away from anything, anybody or anyone or any place, you are in trouble. You are in trouble. So what I need y'all to realize is those who have attachment disorders, more than likely they are an obsessed person, point blank period, y'all, okay? But when you moved on up and away, this is something that they show their attachment disorder. Some people don't know when over is over. Why you think some people say, well, if I can't have you, nobody can. That's the, oh my God. That is, <laughs> I'm sorry to say the, uh, the Lord's name y'all in, in vain, but what I'm saying is that is a terrible, terrible mindset to have. Okay. That's a terrible, terrible mindset to have because that goes back to number four, the need for control. You don't control nobody. Right? You don't control nothing. The only thing you have control over is your destiny, right? In life, okay? But even still, life happens, okay? And you can't control every single thing that happens. You just, you can be a great manager of your life. I'm gonna say it like that. You can put certain systems in place to where this don't happen or this happens. Y'all following what I'm saying? So they are obsessed, y'all, because you moved on up and away okay as a small recap it's going to be this right here y'all number one they're searching for that same feeling number two they are codependent number three traumatized by new experiences number four the need for control and number five y'all attachment disorder okay i'm gonna catch y'all in the next video y'all keep a rich mentality peace What's good, family? It's your boy, Reno. Check this out, y'all. I just dropped my social influence course, okay? Where I show you how to build up your social media platform as well as become a self published author understand what i'm saying y'all if you want to leverage your expertise okay you gotta publish your book but not only that if you want to get popping and build your community you gotta build up your social media platform and so i put that all in one course okay and so all you got to do is go to the link in my bio all right and drop in the comments social influence if you want to build up your social influence click that link in the bio and we're gonna get you popping keep a rich mentality